Call for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. Call, please. Sure. Ms. Bentoncourt? Here. Ms. Bentoncourt? Here. Ms. Olivero? Here. Mr. Durgan? Here. Mr. Yes. Dr. Marlin? Yes. Thank you. Um, anyone who wishes to record or photograph this meeting must first notify the chair, who will then notify the public per Mass Open Meeting Law, July 210. Such audio or video recording may not interfere with this meeting. Okay. Um, Ms. Fredette, do we have any public comment? Okay, we're not turned in. Thank you. Um, reading and acceptance of the January 10 meeting, please. Make a motion to accept the minutes. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Motion passes. Um, let's see. Make a motion we accept the minutes. Second. All in favor? Aye. Second. And we'll be holding the um, exec executive session moment minutes because um, we have some issues with collective bargaining in there. Um, approval of bills, please. Make a motion to accept. As presented. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, now we have um, Skills USA chapter. Of, um, Hello, uh, we are at Skills USA and we are here to tell you a few things about what we do here at the school. Table of contents for today includes Meet the Team, conferences, competitions, chapter events, workshops, Skills USA's week, and monthly happenings. Hello everybody, my name is Jordan Mello. I am the State Region Vice President for Skills USA Massachusetts. I am a junior in the Marine Technology Program here at GNB. And I am yet again competing to become a state officer. Hi everyone, my name is Annalise Alpoli. I am the co-vice president of the Skills USA chapter officers. I'm a junior in the dental assisting program and I'm competing in dental assisting this year. Hi everybody, my name is Nia Rodriguez. I am a junior in the program in the web development shop and I will be competing in the community service competition and I will and I'm the co-vice president with Annalise. So one of the first things we would like to talk about is the conferences and that we attended. So the first one being our Fall State Leadership Conference that was November 20th and 21st and we took 10 students and four advisors and a couple of us had the opportunity to uh, receive our leadership award and a lot of us got, did get recognized in that event. Our second conference was the SAIL Conference and we took seven seniors and three advisors and we just, the SAIL stands for Seniors and Mentors and Leadership and they just got a lot of information to take with them to the next level. Hi, uh, my name is Jada. I am the Skills USA treasurer. Uh, I'm a sophomore in engineering and robotics, and this year I will be competing in urban search and rescue. Um, for our annual competitions that will be held are districts, states, and nationals. So starting with districts, there will be 121 students attending this year on March 3rd, 2023 at GMEVT. Districts will be virtual with lunch and games provided. Districts award ceremony will take place March 8th, 2023. Next up after districts is states. States will be held April 27th through the 29th, 2023 in Marlboro, Massachusetts. There will be two overnight stays and the award ceremony will be held that Saturday. After states is nationals. Nationals will be held June 19th through the 25th, 2023 in Atlanta, Georgia. I will be discussing the chapter events. At the beginning of the school year, all chapter officers and our state region vice president participated in the chapter officer retreat. Here we developed the program of work and training which was taking place. This took place on October 1st, 2022. The next event is Reese Across America. Following 39 students and three adults slash advisors participated in Reese Across America. On December 17th, 2022, 
A ceremony is held to remember and honor America's veterans. All in the ceremony, graves are placed on each gravestone. Then, on January 14, 2023, the students and advisors came together again to remove the wreaths from the gravestones. In partnership with DEI, for the month of January, the Skizzer State chapter officers partnered with Ms. Dennis to highlight the diverse cultures, religions, and influential leaders that have impacted the world today. In doing so, each day a morning announcement was made by the chapter officers every single day. And the next chapter officer event is the MRE Challenge. On January 26, 2023, six sophomore culinary students participated in the MRE Challenge. Three were home in first place. Thank you. So next we'll be talking about our workshops that we did. So our first workshop that we did was the um, cover letter and resume workshop. And we had Dr. Jo Bumpus come in and she talked to us about writing a good uh, cover letter and a good resume, which will help us get the job. And our next com and that was on January 10th. And our next conference was for seniors only in as an entrepreneurship workshop. And this gave 50 uh, seniors the opportunity to get the tools to help run their own business. I will be talking about the SkillsUSA Week and monthly happenings. One of, our <clears throat> one of our recent events was SkillsUSA Week, occurring from February 6th to the 7th, 2023. Our first day of SkillsUSA Week was Give Back Day, where we came together and prepared military packages. Our second day of SkillsUSA Week was Advocacy Day, where we did a raffle basket fundraiser and prepared the school committee presentation. Our third day of SkillsUSA Week was SkillsUSA Day, where we encouraged students and staff to wear red or SkillsUSA swag to promote our time is now day. Our fourth day of SkillsUSA Week was Recognition and Partner Day, where we recognized SkillsUSA alumni in the school and held an entrepreneurship workshop. For our monthly happenings, the chapter officers submit new Popperns updates for the student body, staff, and guardians to get new updated information on SkillsUSA. We also hold chapter officer and innovation team meetings, where we discuss projects that need to be accomplished and our goals for the upcoming month. Thank you very much for your continued support. Are there any questions at this time? Okay. Thank you so much for your time. You're oh. going to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> She's trying to get out of it. <laughs> that, that was very smooth, by the way. But again, <laughs> they, they don't talk fast or anything. I'm mean, no. not trying to get through this. What are some of the questions? Well, no, I, I, I'm not, not even questions as much as that. But it is like, how is it going? with the other students. You are leaders of the skills you say, which I am very happy to, to be part of in the sense of when we're starting here. Do you feel that students look forward to skills? Do, they, do you think that, that you have to drag people in or, or is it something that is already here established? What's your opinion? Right. I'll, I'm going to start with this one. Um, of the 121 students that are competing at districts, 19% are seniors, 32% are juniors, 46% are sophomores, and 3% are freshmen. So it's building back up. Right now, the most interested are the younger ones. We have more freshmen interested than we have competitions to allow them to compete in. Great. Well, I think it's part of the leadership that you have. So I mean, hats off to them. It is right. Right now, it's building up. We 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 had to start again from scratch because of COVID, but we're we're building. But that's what I'm hearing from all schools. That's not just our school. That's across Massachusetts. So that's not something that's just here. How do you feel about that? Yep. Go ahead, Jacob. He didn't get a chance to introduce himself. Go, go for it. Oh, I'm Jacob. I'm the chapter reporter. I'm in the marine technology shop with Jordan, and I compete in marine technology competition. Uh, so, from what I've noticed, the younger students I can second are very interested, and in, I think it starts with the teachers. Um, the shop teachers do a great job um, very early on explaining what skills you say um, does and why that, uh, they should be a part of it. So. Uh, through exploratory, we would have freshmen come through only the second or third week sometimes, and they would already be asking about Skills USA. Did your shop do Skills USA? Tell me more about Skills USA. Um, so I think the teachers are doing a fantastic job of getting the word out, and I think um, 
finding the right competition for students is another strong suit of teachers when it comes to our program. Thank you. Excellent. Excellent. That's a real brief question. Um, I was interested. You said something about you were competing in search and rescue. That that's a new. Is that new? Because I know I'm. It, much. It's not the search and rescue you may be thinking okay. of. It's that's urban why search and rescue. It's robotics. Oh. It's done by engineering. It's not done by criminal justice, which okay. I'm thinking may be what you're thinking right. it well, may be. Right. I didn't even know they had it in the robotics um, area because it's been there for about four or five years now. Um, it's neat. I failed at it miserably when I tried. Um, you have to build a robot. It has to go through an obstacle course, and you have to put something in a mailbox without looking, only on the TV screen. Um, but she's doing it, and it's, it's, a, it's a fantastic thing. Something. How do you do with it? Have you worked it? Are you doing it now? Right now, I'm studying for the district test, and I'm also working on my uh, robot that I'll be developing. Good luck with it. Thank you. Any other questions from the? Just a comment. Um, as Mrs. Ribeiro and Mr. Shea can probably attest to, uh, having been here and gone through Skills USA, VICA, or as it was called back in the, in the day, uh, I was an advisor, and let me tell you, it is a very intense competition. And I commend all these young people for doing it. Uh, and those that reach the level, I've had the opportunity to go to the nationals, and it is very, very intense. But it, it's a worthwhile trip because it's very, uh, very involved, and you get a lot of camaraderie from the different areas. You learn what life is like in different areas of the country and different schools. So keep up the good work, and keep all your hard efforts. So. <coughs> Thank you, and thank you for your support. Of course, we can't do it without you. So thank you very much, and happy Valentine's Day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so next we have the superintendent shout out, please, Mr. Watson. Thank you, Dr. Marlin. Uh, you know, as always, we can thank uh, everyone for their efforts every day with kids. But this month, I wanted to just uh, give a special shout out following my third student advisory committee meeting with some of the staff. You know, what keeps coming up from kids is the uh, lunchroom, the cafeteria. Um, and we've recently had a change replacing Lori Lima, who was here for a long time. Uh, Andy Culp has done a really fantastic job uh, leading the team, diversifying the menu, and kind of uh, meeting kids where they are in terms of some of the, the different offerings. So I want to take a minute tonight just to recognize the outstanding contributions of our cafeteria staff uh, and really working to try to meet students uh, with some of their new lunch uh, lunch offerings. Great, thank you. Any questions for Mr. Watson? Right along, um, Mr. Watson, parent communications. Included in your packet are the most recent POSSIP surveys and responses from all grades. As has been practiced throughout the year, the Family Engagement Center uh, is returning all calls with, self, uh, with numbers that are provided by parents and directing them to the appropriate staff to have the input. Um, next is the Artisan Report and Principal Williams, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Again, another, another very busy month here at Great Inland Effort Folk Tech throughout January and February already. Uh, first, we're going to talk about our science department led by Erin Wallace, backed by her great teachers in that department. <clears throat> Engagement in science classrooms throughout the year, we're working on labs and activities and a variety of different things. Biotech is working on DNA extraction labs. That's too bad because there's awesome pictures here. <laughs> <laughs> you all have it in your packet. We're on the biotech page, DNA extraction lab. Great work that they're doing there. We have a lot of illustrations. Moving on to Science Strategies 1. Again, Science Strategies really an MCAS preparatory program, but you can see that they're taking it to the next level beyond just how to take the test, but literally just the skills that are needed to pass the test. As you see kids uh, engage in testing dissolving rates of Alka-Seltzer tablets as they incorporate the scientific method into the, to that project and that work. Moving on to scientific, uh, physical science classes in the science department, uh, students built clay boats to test buoyancy. Uh, they also built wooden bridges, bridges as an engineering project. The students will test the strength of the 
ratio with the bridge tester when complete. Awesome work. Probably a good partnership with our engineering department on that one next time we do it. <clears throat> Moving on to our phys ed and athletics department. A lot of, lot of activity there. Our boys indoor track team on, August, on January 25th. Did I say August? Am I already thinking about August? <laughs> it feels that way sometimes, so. <laughs> January 25th, 2023, our boys track team won the SCC championship this winter season. That's an amazing feat wow. for our students. Too bad you don't see the visual should be coming up soon. That group there is still Williams, amazing. just take a breath. One second, please. There's the crew. <laughs> okay, great. Thank, Thank you. you. There's the crew. Some all-stars in there. Um, and I don't know if we see Mr. Thornhill in there. We don't, but he's a legend. Um, he had his 50th career win with this uh, SEC championship win, so that's a, that's a great feat. Laudable uh, for that group. Moving on to the Ski and Snowboard Club. Uh, Mr. Harvey and the students in the Ski and Snowboarding Club went on their first trip of the season. That trip was at Waterville, Waterville Valley in New Hampshire. Awesome <coughs> trip for the kids. See our students there on uh, snowboards and skis. It's pretty cool. We'll move on to Academy A Construction Department led by Jeff Wildrick and his amazing team of teachers. First, we'll talk about carpentry, senior carpentry students. They participated in off-campus construction work at the Lloyd Center, where they're doing their finishing touches. You can see that they're now painting. Next, we'll look at the plumbing shop, also at the Lloyd Center for off-campus off construction. Uh, you'll see in the illustrations below, students have learned new techniques for fusing aquatherm piping. Those are the green pipes that are running throughout. Um, and you can see that the black pipes are going down to the composting. So our kids are learning state-of-the-art green methods for plumbing, which is awesome. HVAC. Our HVAC seniors took the EPA R410 high-pressure refrigeration cert. 100% of those seniors passed that exam. The juniors are in the second cycle of EPA Section 608, which is um, a cert certificate which federally recognizes the trade license. The 10th graders are wrapping up their OSHA 10 training. Uh, juniors and seniors are starting the process of remodeling their shop to accommodate new technology and equipment. Moving on to the electrical shop in Academy A. Junior students. Junior electrical students are working on LED lighting installation in the automotive shop as well as a couple of other shops. Uh, you see them out there manning lifts and, and doing a variety of work. Doing a great job with that. Sophomore students. Great illustration that you see to the top right. Those are, that's actually the house that's in our school. Uh, and you can see that they're doing work that emulates live work. And um, that's a sophomore group learning about overhead services. Uh, Mr. Cobbs actually video recorded this work. And it's up on the, the principal's Google Classroom that I have for teachers to be able to see the repository of great teaching. Uh, he's a great teacher, so we have that up there for other shop teachers to see. So that I mean, they can get some tips on how to um, better deliver instruction. So our senior on-site construction projects, on-site electrical construction seniors have been working on a new athletic shed on the north side of the football field that you see when you're driving in from Church Street. Uh, at this point, you'll probably see the lit up bear sign. As you leave, you'll be able to see that. Um, the project consists of off-grid solar system to power interior and exterior lights of the shed, mounting and wiring the rooftop array, and installing conduit wire from the roof to exterior disconnects to power the inverters. Kids are learning some real world skills that'll make them extremely employable when they get out there. So Academy Lee, uh, Academy B, led by Joanne Romanelli and her amazing team. Uh, EMT, the EMT students have completed the traumatic emergencies module and are working on medical emergencies module at, module at the time. Medical director, Dr. Terenowicz, will train students to check and inject protocols in reviewing medication administration. Legal and protective services. The senior students have completed 911 training. FBI agents were guest speakers for junior and seniors. That's pretty awesome. And Mass State Police were on site to discuss traffic stops and LIDAR, which is light detection and ranging, with our 10th and 11th graders. You see the illustrations there in the center. Um, you don't get to see the dog that was there in the bottom bottom picture, but they were actually, the dog was kind of where Elijah is right now when they were here in this room. It was the cutest thing if you could have seen it. Too bad. Um, so early childhood education, moving on. Ms. Brightman's junior class traveled to the Providence Children's Museum with the preschool children. 
Must have been a cute sight to see. Seniors in child care methods courses have been re researching resources to create diverse learning experience for the kids, for the children. Um, this project entitled Race Review allows students to explore material and lessons to promote inclusive curriculum for young children. Quote on the next slide says, they're not too young to talk about race, said by student Kaylee Munier, class of 2024. We'll move on to dental assisting. Senior students in dental assisting and staff attended the Yankee Dental Convention in the Boston, that's illustrated uh, in the bottom left. That convention provided education in dentistry. These innovative technology products and services uh, were introduced and explained to the students. In medical assisting, Mrs. Carvalho, 12th grade teacher, has obtained co-op positions for all 16, or for 16 juniors, which are paid positions, which is amazing for junior students. The positions are at the following, South Coast Urgent Care, South Coast ENT, South Coast Orthopedics, Hawthorne Medical, Gastroenterology, Cardio, Urology, Endocrinology, and Nephrology. I didn't stutter once on those. Did you study all those words? <laughs> a couple days now in a row. <laughs> right. Right. Good job. Uh, some juniors and seniors will take the NHA exam in the spring to become a certified assistant. Great work. Culinary. January 26, two teams of 10th grade culinary students competed in the Skills USA and National Guard MRE Challenge at the National Guard Armory in Natick, which was just mentioned by our Skills students at the podium. With only some basic kitchen tools and plating equipment, one team of three crushed it, winning three gold medals, one silver medal, and a grand champion overall prize. It's pretty amazing. Um, the congratulations to Bailey Fortin, Owen Medeiros, and Olivia D'Almeida, who you can see illustrated there black tops with the uh, red lanyards. In addition to the medals and plaques, each team member was gifted a set of Slitzer Professional Kitchen Knives. Bob, I bet you can yeah. attest those are pretty expensive. <laughs> <laughs> pretty awesome. Maybe a lot of money. Absolutely. So nurse assisting. On to the next slide. So our 11th grade students completed dementia training and are finishing up all their required skills and they're preparing to report to Alden Court Nursing, nursing home to fulfill 30 clinical hours each. And 100% of the senior class in nurse assisting are out on call. That's 25 students out. That's it. That's it. Next one, say cheese. And I'm a cheese lover, so I love this slide. Mm -hmm. The culinary staff attended an all-day cheese-making professional development. Uh, the information will be shared with students. The information and the cheese will be shared with students. <laughs> so certificates and competitions. Uh, next slide. All in Academy B. So administrative skills to the left, you'll see 25 medical sophomores earn a certificate in keys to, to your future. 18 dental 10th graders earn a certificate in time management. 15 dental juniors earn a certificate in materials management. And 26 medical sophomores have earned a certificate in teamwork. Um, those students in Academy B uh, in the Skills USA program, um, 43 of whom will compete in Skills USA District 1 competitions. The following shops will be represented from Academy B. Nursing and Health, Dental Assisting, Medical Assisting, Culinary, Legal Protective, and Early Childhood. Amazing on the part of Academy B in their work with Skills USA. And I also want to mention about Skills USA. Uh, they did all the, I think they did a great job. But we had uh, Mr. Joe Aruda, who was also present, but off to the side. He is now additionally a class advisor for Skills USA. And we just recently, as an administration, went from two advisors to four advisors, recognizing the growth of Skills USA and the importance of Skills USA at our vocational technical school. Uh, so that investment goes a long way uh, in, in promoting the skills that our kids prepare for so they can be uh, well gainfully employed out in the future. Uh, moving on to our next department, Family Engagement Center. The Family Engagement Center, or FEC for short, is focused on increasing parent outreach and participation. They have a self-referral program. Uh, parents, parents, guardians, and students can refer themselves by completing a referral form at the FEC, and uh, an FEC specialist will contact that family within 48 hours. Uh, the types of assistance, uh, typically concrete needs, are food, housing, utilities, and clothing that can be furnished uh, with the support of the FEC specialist. So referral assistance to add to address also Referral assistance uh, will address educational, therapeutic, mental health, and substance use. Um, Strength-based model is utilized in the FEC, which highlights what is working well in the family and school dynamics. Uh, 
Um, they identify areas that may need attention or improve overall function and stimulate student success. They also hosted an applications night. Uh, it was on uh, two applications night hosted on January 26th and February 9th, uh, in which the FEC hosted eighth graders and their families to fill out applications for greater development goals. Next slide, you'll see that the FEC will be hosting on April 11th an annual job fair. This event is for 10th and I'm sorry, 11th and 12th graders. Over 20 employees have already registered electrical, childcare, and human services, and more coming, representing those fields. More details will follow. From our assistant principals and security, particularly from our dean of freshmen, for this slide, shops have been assigned to freshmen. Freshman exploratory ended January 30th, um, and on January 31st, students attended their first day in shops. Mr. Pimentel and his team have worked hard to ensure all freshmen students are properly placed in their appropriate vocational program. <clears throat> now to security updates. Members of the security team have joined forces with uh, Greater Bedford Vogue Tech staff throughout the school to form a security in a crisis team, which has met a number of times. Uh, that's a cross-section of folks that have really focused on preparing for the event of an emergency situation, not just for active shooter or an active knife wielder, but just a variety of different emergencies that could take place. Recognizing that the security team has a limited number of people, um, the security in a crisis team is focusing on people power to make the school safe. And so that's great work being done, and that's a collaborative uh, with a variety of outside agencies as well. Also, though, uh, the security team will be working on ALICE. The security team will be preparing for its second ALICE drill, or as it states, ALICE training, but ALICE drill. It will be held in the spring. And final slide. For the assistant principals, professional development. Over the past couple of months, the assistant principals have attended trainings regarding new laws around student discipline, and the laws have changed significantly. So a lot of work has been done with our administration team at their leadership to ensure that we are compliant. They also went on district trainings from MSAA, or Massachusetts School Administrative Association, which provided, which provided valuable information to help prepare the school to comply with state laws. Also, the security team in our SRO Officer Leanne Fisher will be attending the upcom upcoming MJPOA, which is the Massachusetts Juvenile Police Officers Association Conference, where they will be training, training sessions to keep up to date with current standards around school safety. I can say that's an amazing training um, that a lot of administrators and guidance counselors go on as well. And with that, I want to thank you for your ear and listening to the wonderful things that are going on here at our school, and I can't wait to present next month. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Madam Chair, uh, this video that Mr. Cobbs has made, is there a possibility that we could get more of these videos made in the various shop areas? And if so, is it possible that we could take these out on visitations when we go to other sites, uh, when we do a recruiting? I think it would be a yeah. tool in, in our recruiting efforts. I know I'm not supposed to use that word, recruiting. <laughs> um, and secondly, we had the uh, application nights. What were the results of those applications? Uh, did we have a good turnout? Or? Oh, family, uh, family engagement nights? Yeah, the, ap the, the application. So the applications for next year's class are pretty good. In terms of the details of the actual nights, I don't think that they were very well attended. I don't have that number off the top of my head. Uh, but we are just around 1,100 applicants for, for next year's freshman class as of this week. And I, I know the FEC staff work on marketing of, of the family engagement centers, so getting the word out there that they exist is still something we're working on to get more parents involved. Uh, so we continue to do that. So. Okay. And I can say even in, in other districts like New Bedford Public Schools, et cetera, it's difficult to get parents after, after work. So we're yes. trying to be creative about how we can get folks in our building for those sessions. No, go ahead. No, I wanted to finish. Okay. Yeah. I wanted uh, just to speak to the video, if that's okay. The video, certainly. So we put out a message to, to all staff, both academics and CTE, and uh, Mr. Cobbs happily said he'd uh, like to see have his class recorded, and others have as well. And so we're working on those with our media department who actually go in and do a good job 
uh, doing those videos. And so when they're available, we can certainly, if they're comfortable, share them with anyone, the community or what have you. So uh, anytime we can expose great teaching, because that's the purpose, showing our new teachers good teaching through other teachers, that's the best case scenario in my eyes. Thank you. <clears throat> I just, I just had a comment on the family engagement piece. It's very difficult to get people to come out from huh. parents' work or different things going on. We've had that. That's across the board. It's not unique to this school. It's, uh, it's across the board. But uh, one little tip, food always gets some yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you that. Yeah. 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 Easy yeah. enough. Jay, please. Uh, just two questions. You mentioned the security team. <laughs> I know that things have changed drastically, you know, with the pandemic and now with everything that's going on in our world. Are we still working with, like, the local police, the state police, you know, members of, of the community and to help? It used to be a, a group that came together and just to make sure that they knew what we were doing, what they were doing. Is that still happening or is it just all different? So what you're saying specifically, we are working on making happen. So we all, we've all we always had a close relationship with the New Bedford Police Department. Right. That's strong. We have not had, when it comes to emergencies in the school, we have not had that relationship with the state police um, or NEMLEC, which is the local, which is another uh, group that would come in in a, you know emergency situation. So the purpose of the emergency and a crisis team is to bring those groups together. Because what happens, what we see in, in crisis, let's say an active shooter, Local police, state police will come, and then there's jockeying for who leads or who takes charge. And so we want to bring those groups together so that we have a plan of operation, an SOP in place, if you will, for how we will operate. So that's what the purpose is. So we don't do that at the moment, but that's what we're working on. And that's awesome, because I think with all you're hearing is, is not enough you know, police officers. Not, and I know back when, 100 years ago, they and you were part of this, that, you know, it was already determined that Bedford would run the inner area, the state would do the surrounding. And we had a really great plan, but personnel's changed and time has changed. So I, I, I'm really happy to hear that because with everything going on about test, 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 we forget about the most important thing about safety with this. And, and we saw in the news this week again, happening at another university. You know, it's just, it's crazy, it's nuts. So thank you for doing that. The other thing I, I, I just want to add, the family engagement. I, you know, I'll be interested because I know, you know, maybe we can have an update of them at the end of the year to see how they're doing, but I'll be curious because is there a lot going on with the towns? I'm sure there's a lot going on with the city. Mm -hmm. But to, for us, uh, uh, Dartmouth, if you're reporting back to Dartmouth and reporting back, is that, is that engagement going out there and how are they being received? You know, is it that we're all, we're all set, <laughs> or yeah. or is it being received? So I'll be interested on how engagement is working in the town down. So what we'll do uh, at the end, two quick things. I wanted to just make sure you knew that the MOU with the New Bedford Police I signed over the summer, so that has been updated, uh, just so that you have some some uh, confidence in the fact that our relationship, as Wally mentioned, about with the New Bedford Police is strong, um, and we've updated those protocols and that, and that relationship with them. The second piece of that is family engagement is tracking what they're doing every day, every week, every month. Um, so towards the end of the year, we can absolutely bring them in front, let them let you know exactly the community events which they participated in, how many people have come in in each of these categories, and kind of give you a look at the data in terms of what we've been able to accomplish in that first full year. I appreciate that very much, because I think eventually, you know, Sydney and I would be going back to the you know, Dartmouth, and I'd like to include all areas of interest rather than just one or two things that they're interested in. Let them know that we're, we're doing something. Thank yep. you. Just for that, just make a note of that. Yep, I'm sure you already did. But. Okay. Any other questions? All set. Ready to move ahead to the superintendent weekly updates, please. In your packet of the last five weekly updates from January 9th, including the most, well, second, the most recent one on February 6th. So uh, we'll send, as always, to all staff on Monday, and they're included in your packet. Uh, next is uh, Mr. Gonzalez. He's going to do our representative report for the students. Cool. So, good evening. I hope you guys like your chocolate that you got from BPA. Thank you for supporting. Um, so, first, I want to start off with Black History Month. 
So right now, we are currently in the month of Black History. And each day during the morning announcements, we recognize people who made an impact in civil rights and paved the way for a progressive um, economy. Well, a, um, we're not economy, man, come on. A society, there we go. A society that is equal, that has equality for all. And today we recognize Frederick Douglass. And the announcement for today read, February 14th is Frederick Douglass' birthday. Frederick Douglass is the iconic enslaved man who escaped and became an interna international abolitionist and activist. Did you know that after Frederick Douglass passed away in 1895, many saw the importance of honoring his memory and activism? In Washington, D.C., a group led by Mary Church Terrell observed Douglass, Douglass's birthday every February 14th as Douglass Day. So it's cool that we have a school that partners up with the diversity, equity, and inclusion team, and we can recognize Black History Month. Um, here's some important dates coming up. So next week is February vacation, and that is important because we get to rest. Have <laughs> <laughs> fun. Um, that's true. So March 10th is also the spring pep rally, and this is the first time we're ever doing a second pep rally. It's going to be Hollywood themed. So um, yeah, wish us luck. Wish the student council luck. We'll be working hard on it. Uh, March 11th is also the spring fling dance. And the Votech Theater Company will be putting on their spring production of 9 to 5 on May 5th, 6th at 7 p.m. and on May 7th at 2 p.m. Tickets are $15 each. And come out and see what the uh, company has done. They always put out some cool performances, so come through. Um, and here is the schedule for home games for this week. So the Lady Bears varsity basketball team will be playing Wareham on Thursday at 5 p.m. here. Um, the boys' varsity basketball team will be playing DR on Friday at 6.30 p.m. And that's their last basketball game, I believe. So come through. I'm definitely going. Um, and the boys' varsity hockey um, team will be playing Manami Saturday at 3.30 p.m. And this will also be their senior night. They're going to be celebrating their senior night. So come through. It's going to be a fun time. Uh, yeah, come support the beers. And last week was National Counselor Week. So the counselors at our school are really amazing. And I want to shout out my counselor, Mr. Wiley DeSilver. So Mr. De Silva, he's always available. He's always reminding me to apply for scholarships. Every day I'm getting notifications to apply for this scholarship. Really cool. And he encourages me to never settle for less and to think big. So I want to thank Mr. De Silva for his just um, consistency, especially in my shop, keeping us in check. And um, also, I want to announce the members, the National Honor Society officers for the class of 2024. So once we leave, seniors, we, we're leaving soon. It's crazy. <laughs> um, these juniors will be filling all spots. So um, I want to announce Annalise Appleby as the president, um, Gabriella Venturi as the vice president of membership, Keila Padilla as the vice president of community service, Catherine Padilla as the secretary, and Louis Pinto as the treasurer. And this is going to be the officers of the National Honor Society for the class of 2024. Um, and congrats to these students as they take positions next school year. And leadership is more than a role, it's a responsibility. And I feel like at Vogue Tech, at least for me, I've been provided a lot of opportunities in which I can be a leader, which I can lead something. So leadership is definitely something that um, takes a lot out of you. And a lot of these kids are not only involved in National Honor Society, they're involved with SkillsUSA. You saw uh, Annalise, she's the vice president of something in SkillsUSA. She's a part of the Christian Students Club. All these kids are involved, they give back to our community. So I want to shout out to them. Um, let's talk about the student council. So like Mr. Watson, Superintendent Watson, kind of highlighted the new cafeteria team. They're trying to improve the school lunch menu. So as requested by Mrs. Andrea Culp, which is the new manager, the student council put out a survey for lunch menu feedback. And from the survey, we received over 560 responses. And what was cool about these responses is that none of them were negative. You know what I mean? I feel like every response that we got, I mean, I didn't look through them all, the 560, I've been there all day, but, but for the majority of it, they were very positive feedback. So it's cool to see that students are like, okay, this is awesome, we're going to be heard. Um, and the lunch menu has been, uh, been something that's been talked about ever since I was a freshman. When are we going to get this? When are we going to do that? When are they going to listen to us? And thanks to the new cafeteria team, um, Mr. Pies for putting out that survey, short notice, we are able to get some get our voice, get to be heard, all right? So, thank you. And then Government Day is an annual gathering of students from every school in which they are able to travel to the Capitol building and commune with some state representatives. And this year, we'll be sending Junior Naya Rodriguez to the Capitol building for Government Day. And also, she was a part of the 
um, Skills USA officer team. You see these kids, they do a lot. Um, and the class of 2023 will be hosting its fundraiser, the Color Run, on May 20th. And this is going to be a big event. We're going to have the National Guard come through. We're going to have inflatables. It's also going to be a cookout for our seniors, too. So I'm pumped for it. Freshman year, freshman me, I'm so excited because, so before COVID, right, we planned to do a cookout, right? We had a Linda plan, and we, was, we were going to do a class of 2023 cookout, but then COVID happened. So this is our time to kind of bring that back. So it's pretty cool. And then lastly, I want to highlight the government and politics class. So last week, Mr. Scott Sparker's class invited the National Alliance of Mental Illness to set up a table to educate students on mental health. The table ran during all lunch shifts, and NAMI, which is the National Alliance of Mental Health Illness, was able to give out informational books and pamphlets about mental health. The pencils and bookmarks were also given out too. And I believe that this was really um, impactful in our school because mental health is something that's been rising recently, right? Ever since COVID, we see people struggling with mental health. And the, the question is, who's going to help us navigate through that? You know what I mean? In a school that we have um, students at Vogue Tech who is like, OK, we can do any project. We can have a pizza party. We can get we can um, do something for our class. But they decided to take their big project and do something for the whole school. So um, shout out to those students. Are you definitely not watching, but shout out to you. Um, <laughs> yeah. And that's all I have for my student report. <laughs> any questions? Any questions? <laughs> What was your response to the lunch? What was your number one response? Man, so... You must have put in a request. You must have... I didn't actually, but if I was to put one, I would say, so the question was, what is an item that you like? What is an item you dislike? And what would you like to see on the menu? So I think for me, what I would like to see on the menu is something like spicy. <laughs> I mean, we have good lunch, we have good lunch, but something spicy on like, I don't know, um, you know, Hispanic Day, like something that like that like mag like that expresses culture in our school. I think something spicy would be cool. Kick it up a notch. Right. Hey, come on. Kick it up a notch. Right. Any other questions? Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you. I love your report, Elijah. I, I just I don't know what thank you. Do that. Yeah. I get so, so awesome. I get so nervous. Thank you. I don't smile this much during the course of a day. Was I hear that? It was awesome. Yeah, oh, yeah, gonna miss you. We were so worried when Sarah left. Look. Yeah. Yeah. What do you want on the menu? Something spicy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, maybe I should have said something. <laughs> right on. Oh my gosh. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, vote to approve the summer school teacher rate of pay to $40 an hour. Superintendent. Thank you, Dr. Marlin. So I'm going to make a quick request at the end there. I'd like to amend that to uh, include a summer teacher pay rate of $45 per hour for any certified applicant uh, and $40 per hour for non-certified applicants. And that uh, is designed to try to make the jobs and positions attractive, both to internal candidates as well as external candidates, to make sure that we have proper staff and proper class sizes. This the next two years, this will be funded through the ESSA 3 federal relief bill. Uh, we also need to be cognizant of what that number is because when that federal funding expires, uh, we will need to have a different conversation um, about funding. In the past, it has been on students. So just bear in mind that we currently have paid $30 per hour, going up by 50% uh, to 45, which I think is both appropriate, fair, but also we need to be aware of the fact that that cost could be passed on to some of our, to some of our students at some point. So, I think this creates the, the mechanism for us to be able to provide an attractive opportunity for some staff members who may be interested, but also at the same time with our eye to 2025, uh, creating a sustainable financial path to make sure that we're able to do it. Make a motion to go to 45. Uh, second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, okay. Um, vote to approve specifications for health center and culinary lab. Um, we're asking for a recommendation for the committee to approve the specifications. Any discussion on this? Okay, I've got her name circled, but I'm just ignoring it. <laughs> All right, thank you. Go for it, Pam. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this is the same type of request that we're asking the committee to do as we had done with the cosmetology project, because some of the existing equipment and um, infrastructure that's already in the area that we are going to either improve on or in, uh, grow, we need to continue with the same type of um, items and 
proprietary items. So what I need to do is I need to read this list for the committee um, to approve. So here I go. Please bear with me. Um, for finished hardware, it would be lock sets that shall be Corbin, Russwin, Silligent. Oh boy, this is going to be easy. Cylindrical. I cannot Cylindrical. 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 I can never say that word. Lock sets with LFIC cores as specified. Exit devices, which are panic bars, shall be Von Duprin products as specified. Magnetic hold open devices shall, shall be SEH series by LCN as specified. Automatic door closers shall be LCN products as specified. For HVAC equipment, new building energy management system devices shall be products of Siemens Corp as specified to match and be fully compatible with the exi existing building systems. Electrical. Speaker strobes shall be compatible with Edwards EST3 control panel as specified. New panel board shall be Eaton Power R Line 1A panel board as specified. New master clock system components shall be products of Primex Incorporated to match and be fully compatible with the building wide clock system. Lighting control components shall be products of Lutron Quantum Series as specified in order to be fully compatible with existing lighting systems panels and controls. Smoke detectors shall be SIGA OSD series with SB4 base and heat detectors shall be SIGA HFD intelligent fixed temperature heat detector and SIGA HRD intelligent fixed temperature rate of rise heat detectors as manufactured by UTC fire and security company as specified. New card access proximity readers if not salvaged and reused, shall be multi-class SE RP40 readers as manufactured by HID in order to match building standards as specified in section 280001. These are all of the items that we're requesting the committee to approve as proprietary in regards to the culinary renovation and health center lab. Make a motion we approve the proprietary equipment. Second, I have a question. Yes, um, so basically what you're saying was we're trying to be consistent with the way the building is now. Exactly. Okay. So it's... Oh, any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Costa Rica trick. Um, Mr. Shepard and Ms. Harris. To the sodium. We appreciate it. Thank you. So I, I don't know if there are any specific questions that need to be clarified from all the documentation that we provided. Uh, from the last meeting in regards to insurance, liability, um, identifying the school and so forth. So I don't know if there are any specifics around, uh, you know, what we'd had from last month's meeting. So we be updated with all that additional information you requested. Through you, Madam Chair. Uh, quick question. What I don't understand is if there is, according to your documents here, there's no liability or responsibility on the part of the school. Why is it necessary for the school committee's approval? That's actually an excellent uh, question, <laughs> Mr. Toomey. Uh, again, I think that we wanted to do our due diligence. Uh, we bring this before the uh, school committee to get their approval to move forward with such a uh, planned trip. We didn't, want to, we didn't want to just force this down, uh, not that we we're forcing it on anybody's throat, but we felt that it was important to at least acknowledge the fact that uh, this is a uh, trip that uh, we've never done before in the school's history, and uh, we felt that it was important to comprise the school committee in terms of what we we're doing and to get their approval to move forward. So, in the past, with the other school that I was with, that, with that's the protocol that we had to do. So I assumed that that was the same protocol that we had to do, was get the school committee's approval to take a, a group from school. 
So that's. I mean, if it was a school-sponsored event, yes, it would be required to come through the school committee to put approval. But, uh, you indicate that the school has no liability or responsibility in your documentation here. Uh, so I was just wondering why you're coming here other, you know, other than the fact there's an informational thing or well, again, I think, uh, as uh, Susan just said, this is a customary practice with uh, all of these uh, types of uh, planned trips uh, with other school districts. So we wanted to follow past practices uh, that other school districts have uh, performed with regards to notifying the school of such travel. Mr. Jay, please. Yeah, thank you for our documentation. I did answer a lot of questions. I know at the last meeting we had, we were talking about this. And I just want to say that um, I, my, I mean, my grandson's at another school. He's going on the same trip at a different time. And I kind of also talked to my daughter about it because as a parent, what are you thinking of a school? And again, the answer seems to be like, you know, they, this county's been doing this for a long time. And it seems like that they, they run it associated with the school's permission because it's almost a type of thing of they want a joint effort on, this is my opinion. Yeah. Really, so I, I, I think, I understand what Freddie is saying. Do we have to approve some that maybe we're not responsible for? But, but I do think it's a, a, a procedural thing to let the parents know that we support their decision to send their child to this trip. We're not telling a kid that all <coughs> All the body kids are going, the collision repair kids are going. You know, this is a decision by the parent. And so my daughter, I mean, this is what her and her husband talked about. And they said, yeah, we think it's a great experience. Go. So I appreciate the paperwork. I'm in favor of it because even I know there's some controversial with our lawyer. I was saying they're never, never 100% clean. Uh, <laughs> guess what? You play sports on the field. It's never 100% no injury. So, you know, sometimes they go. So I, 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 I I'm only supporting this because of you two, of what you did to, to get me answers. So I appreciate that. Uh, Mr. Oliveira, please. Um, so I, I, I was kind of against this last month as well when we discussed it. I'm not against the trip. I guess I follow with Mr. Toomey. I'm against the school committee sanctioning a trip that's not a school committee sanctioned trip. So why are we being asked to approve a trip that is really not our responsibility to approve. If it wants to be, if you want to make this informational, then certainly the information is good. I'm glad to see that, you know, insurance is covered, but I feel very uncomfortable sanctioning a trip like this if we're not required to do that. Keep it strictly informational. Yeah, if I can. Yeah. Um, I, I can echo everybody. I appreciate all the information. I think it was so helpful for all of us that had questions about logistics and you know interest and those type of things i think we probably need one more meeting because that is a question that we you know we're working on with the attorney does it need a vote from school committee or is it informational and we support it and and off you go um so i know that you know we discussed mm -hmm. that meeting to that really concretely know if we have to vote on this as a school committee because our students are leaving the country or if it's, it is a you know, non-school sanctioned event and it's informational. So I don't know that we have clarification yeah. at this point. Well, so may, I, I'm sensing that w where this is going. It's just a, to, to make sure we don't, if we're not ready to take a vote, we're not ready to take a vote. But maybe what makes sense um, is for the committee to delegate a member or two members to have a conversation directly with mm -hmm. the attorney. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I got an email today from him that, that basically was talking to me and I forwarded to Maria basically revising the language of the EF thing. So I don't even know if that's possible or not, but that might be a question just for you guys to have an answer and he can, or somebody can have a conversation with the, the Ed Foundation. I don't, I don't know that answer that just came through today, but if there's un, uncomfortability of the committee rather than saying no today, what might make sense is for us to just inquire about what, what, is, what are the answers to those questions that you may have. Um, it's just a suggestion. It's not my place to do that, but um, in the interest of trying to make sure that we're, you know, responding. I'm only concerned, and I think that's a safe way of doing it. My only concern is that they brought this to us months, months ago. Yeah. And we delay, we delay, we delay. And I would be on that side saying, 
you know, we need to get moving on this thing. And I think, as like I said, I mean, my way of working with lawyers is that they're always a but. You know, because what we do, I mean, people can sue us on anything they want. They have sued us for anything they want. And, and we all say no, 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 and we end up settling. You know, so I, I you know, I think I'm doing it from as a parent, grandparent, school committee, former educator, that I, I, I like to see it shot down or tabled. The more I did, but I, I'm going to make a motion that we, we, we give them an answer tonight. And if we table it because of to get other answers, then the table wins. Sure. But I, I'm going to support them because that we've, we, it's been a lot, enough time for us to get answers. And now it goes to March and maybe to April. And I, I think it, it, yep. it, it's not right. Yep. So I, I, again, I vote my colleagues, you know where we are. We can disagree. <laughs> that's okay. But then we, nobody wants to vote, make the vote on it. That's fine, but I, I like to make a motion that the committee supports the request for students of the school to go on to this trip. And again, you can see the wording is that we support them to go forward with the students who want to go on the trip. It's not we're sanctioning it as a school trip, but they ask that, is that what, would that cover what we're looking at? I believe so. I mean, yeah. uh, again, it's just the protocol that we Protocol, that's right. And that's all we're doing tonight. So, I'll make a motion. Ms. Roberto, please. Uh, on a question. We just, I, we're sitting here, we have a packet in front of us. They just had a s snowboarding trip. The kids from the school went snowboarding or whatever. They're not out of the country. They're in the country. It's still a school trip. They went snowboarding. Somebody can get hurt on a snowboarding thing. Are we liable? I mean, it's the same kind. I'm looking at it from that point of view. That that's a school a school sanction. Mm -hmm. I call it a school sanctioned trip. Okay. I'm just for me. It's very difficult. I'm I'm having a hard time understanding why we didn't approve a school uh, snowboarding trip. Why are we here trying to approve a Costa Rica trip? If it's if that's a, a trip from EF. And the parents want to go, and the kids want to go, when it's on school vacation. I don't know why it's coming to the school committee, other than the fact that somebody's going to be liable for something. If you say that's the only thing I can look at it for, other than that, why are we even having this discussion? I can see because of leaving the country. That's right. usually protocol. Right. That, that right. needs to be approval to leave right. the country right. with our with our right. students. And so students. then that means if they're leaving the country. And we're, we're approving it, we're liable. I don't care how you look at it, no matter what anybody says, and I'm not an attorney. Um, I just would like to speak to the snowboard trip that was mentioned in the presentation. It was not sponsored by any school dollars. They signed up through Bob C and Ski and took the bus we're ride. Not, we're not paying for this trip either. No, I know. That's okay. what I just wanted so to clarify why you didn't approve the Ski and Snowboard Club to go before, because yeah, it was done through but that. We're, they're not asking us for money. No. I know, so but I just wanted to clarify why, why you yeah. hadn't given permission for them right. to go out before, because it wasn't a trip done by um, here at the school. Well, so the question comes, why are we authorizing this one if we didn't authorize right. the CNC trip? That's where and I'm that's my from. feeling. I'm, I, I'm not against it. Like I said, my grand, my grand, they go on trips. The kids have been, I, I have family, like you're saying, Mike, you have your, your daughter or the kids go. That's an awesome opportunity for any kid to be able to go. And if I was a parent and I had a kid that had a chance to go to Costa Rica, I'd say, yep, yeah, go ahead. But the, the question for me as a school board member is why are we approving something unless we have some responsibility in this some way? Other than that, it's a, EF can, it's like going to Disney. Your kids are going to Disney on school vacation. A whole bunch of kids from the school and their parents decide to go to Disney for school vacation. It's not a school-sponsored trip, but they, from somebody in the school, put it together and we're all going to Disney. Are we responsible? No, it didn't come before us. It has nothing to do with us. Would you, if I, we were to say that the vote to have the school committee is aware that students will be going on. Again, I, I'm just trying you know to. What? I, I, don't, I, 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 I want. I, 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 I am not saying I don't want them to go. Believe me, right, right. pay for it and go. I think that's an awesome opportunity. Right. But I'm confused here. 
And I'm being realistic. Why are we trying to force ourselves into this decision? Right. We, we don't belong in the decision. <laughs> Why are we putting ourselves in this position? Mm -hmm. We don't belong here. We don't need to sanction the trip. The trip is a private trip. Let it be that way. And I think Why that's the conundrum. That's that's like, right. We're so getting involved. We have a responsibility you know, to sanction it, and we need to know that. I don't know that we. So yeah. I don't. Yeah, I don't know that answer uh, unless the folks who've worked with EF they look like they might have something to add on this of whether or not a school uh, is required to sanction. I understand what Mr. Oliver and others are saying. I think if you do take a vote to sanction it, then that does put the school in, in some in some of that conversation. I I don't disagree with Mr. Shea either. Right, that you know, this is a great opportunity for kids, right, and certainly right. are educated. So, it's a great trip. I don't know that answer about whether or not, if there was no action taken by the school committee, um, what does that look like? Um, I'm happy to ask that question and find out those answers, but I don't, I don't know that answer tonight. Can I, can I ask one question through you, Madam Chair? If we said we don't sanction it, are these kids still going on a trip? Money's been taken. You already got money. You're telling them if they can go. That's my question well, right now. If we say no, are they still going on a trip? That actually is a, a good question. Thank you. Uh, Those so are so questions so. that we need to know. You right? know, uh, initially, you know, this was the path that we were told we had to take with regards to at least <laughs> notifying, informing the yeah. school committee of this uh, particular trip that was going to uh, take place. Um, I, I don't think it would be. Uh, responsible of us to put something like this together even though it may not be a school sponsored trip but we're still in school mm -hmm. using students emails uh, to communicate on occasion with them about things that are going on the trip I don't think it would be right for us to be doing these things in-house without at least informing you of what we were doing so whether or not uh, it necessarily requires you to take a formal vote to sponsor the uh, trip that is a conundrum that we're that I, I hear you're you're putting before us at this point in time. We were just doing what we thought was the, the protocol that needed to be done. Yeah. Mr. Toomey, please. Yes. One of the things and the reason I brought this up before is in your correspondence to us, you, and the item four, you say that students will be will sign a contract to the effect maintaining similar expectations as set forth to all student athletes. And he said, see attached per the Greater New Bedford Volk Tech Travel Club. I don't know of any travel club that we have here in school. We don't. Student we don't. That's, to me, that indicates that you're putting burden upon us here at the school. And some of the responsibility is going to be set forth, I mean, be put on us. So I'd like to have some <clears throat> clarification, basically. I'm not against the kids going, believe me. I have no, right. no issue with the kids going. It's, uh, I just don't want to see the students put in any position, or the school put in any position of so, ability or responsibility. I, I just found a, in the documents that you send, there's a letter from EF that says, we understand that your school board administration needs more time to review the proposal. Therefore, we'd like to extend the school board guarantee to your group in the event that your school board does not approve your tour simply notify EF that you need to cancel. So if we do not approve it, they will cancel the trip. So that tells me that they want us to be responsible. That's the only thing I can get out of that. Right. No, does that say if we want to cancel, if they no, want to cancel? they're going to cancel. If we don't approve it, the trip is no, I, don't, I don't know. This guarantee will give your school board ample time to make a decision and allow you and your travelers to take advantage of the early enrollment benefits and discounts. So that's in the materials that were provided. So there just seems to be like a confusion. They were told they have to notify the school board. Okay, so notified, placed on file. Right. Now they're saying that they want our approval. Well, that's, so, that's so that they could get all their money back. So the people that have put money forward, if you if you guys said nope, we don't want you guys to do this, then they would okay, get so all how, their money back. How about if we take no action, notified, placed on file? file. Again, you don't need our approval. You just need to notify us. Then yeah. you go ahead with your trip. I, I just think it's there's too many crossovers. Keep it simple. Notify the school committee. Let it placed on file. Continue with your trip. But I don't think you need our blessings. I and really I don't. don't. And I think for me the question is, not to monopolize the conversation, but 
I don't, I don't necessarily know if you're going as employees of Vogue Tech or if you're going as chaperones on this trip but that EF is sponsoring. Because if you're working in the capacity of the school, then, you know, then we have to get involved. I, I, and I don't know that we have that delineation. Yeah, I, I, so I'll, you know, a couple things I know for sure. It's just, we're, all, we're all grappling yeah. with it. You know. I think there are, it is the first time, as yeah. Mr. Shepard alluded to, that we've, yeah. we've dealt with this. So it's taking some time to get some answers. I will say that any out-of-state travel mm -hmm. authorized by the school, track meets, yeah. we got something coming up with a ski a lot down the road, that would require the school committee's approval. I think the question here is whether or not this is actually a school trip or not, number one. And number two, if it's not, are school employees permitted to lead a trip like this with students? Mm -hmm to which they've used the school email and other devices and still have the school not have any liability. I, I don't know that answer tonight. I am happy to uh, push that conversation with members of the committee directly and legal counsel if that helps to move this in, involve, uh, involved. I don't know that they're going to be able to answer that question. You know, they certainly can't answer that question in this moment, right? So we're going to need to figure out a way to get that answer if that's making members uncomfortable. My advice to the folks here is we're not sure, like I would rather us not take a no vote and kind of, you know, stop this rather than get the answers that might move some members. I, I'm hearing that members are generally in support of the trip, but concerned about the school liability. And so I would like to offer a suggestion that we get that answer before we hold a vote that goes one way or the other and may not, it's not going to satisfy somebody. Uh, that's just a thought. I mean, Mr. Shea did make a motion already, though, too, so. Last time there's no, there's no second. There's no second no, right now. No, I mean, I think that is like turning it back to something in the same way. We, we don't hear it, see it, or say it. So I think I was looking at to use the word inform, you know, vote that the school committee has been informed that students, staff plan to have a trip to Costa Rica in 2024. And I, we, we, we're, we're informed. We, we can't deny it if anything happens anyway. Well, you told about it. Yes, we were. What did you do? Nothing. So I don't know if that it would support what they need that school committee on record has been told about this. Because without a vote, you had <clears throat> discussion probably doesn't exist in six months. Mm -hmm. So I, I, don't, I agree. I'm not saying that we sanction it, that we but vote that the school committee has been informed that students and staff, like you said, go to Disney, Student staff plan to have a trip to Costa Rica. But going back to Girl. Kim's question, just if what Kim just said, if if for instance, if if Mr. Shepard is a chaperone on the trip and the school employee and gets hurt in Costa Rica, I'm just throwing something out. Mm -hmm. It gets out in Costa Rica. He went as a school employee or is he going on his own on a field trip like you're on school vacation in Florida and you fall down? I just this is there's a difference there. I'm not mad either. I want these kids to go. I want them to go. Don't play football then because he's already getting any replacement when he's 70 years old. This is a question. Are any of these funds being funneled through the school in any way? Not at this point. So do we have any part in making this trip happen other than authorize? No, no funds are being kept, no funds are being paid. That's what I'm saying. That's, what I don't want That's why I said, if we don't fiction it, I'm fine. I mean, <laughs> going back to Rita's trip, if we don't know. We're giving up our April vacation. I mean, we're giving up our February yeah. vacation. But to go to Costa Rica. Yeah. Well, we're not, uh, there's no compensation that, uh, well, there is no compensation in terms of them paying us to uh, be chaperones on this trip uh, to take these students here. Right. Correct. So the school has no real interest in the trip other than we, we know the people who are going. Again, why are we sanctioning something that we don't need to sanction? Well, we're, we're sanctioning it. But their EF isn't going to well, let it, them go it, unless it, we you, approve it. All it says in the letter is that if your board does not approve your tour, right. they will notify them and refund everybody's money. Yeah, and that, and that, was a, that was an agreement that we wanted to get up front from EF because, again, we already have, we've got close to $10,000, I believe, that's already been right. put aside for the trip. We want to make sure that that money is guaranteed that in the event that, whether or not even we cancel it, <laughs> you know, we decide we don't want to do this, that they're going to get their monies back. Uh, so the way I'm reading into that, though, and I may be reading it wrong, we don't have to authorize a trip, but should we say, no, you cannot go, right. then, then they, they would have to cancel the trip. Yeah. 
I just feel in this case, we don't have to make that decision. We don't have to authorize it. We don't have to sanction it. It's not they don't need our approval, therefore continue with your trip. That's, again, how I look at it. That's how I read that, that paragraph. I could be wrong. I'm not an attorney, but, you know. And again, to Mr. Shays, I have no problem with that motion, but again, why are we doing it? We're doing something that we're not, we don't have any place in. Um, although I don't object to the motion, I don't feel it's necessary. And I, I do think the trip is great. I'd love to be going to Costa Rica. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Toomey? Oh. Through, uh, through you, Madam Chair, would it be uh, easy to expedite or move ahead if we followed Mr. Shea's suggestion and had the chair or co-chair or vice chair work with uh, the two people to try and expedite this and work with them and get the information uh, up front and then just email us and I think we'd have to put together like an emergency meeting if we wanted to expedite a vote if we ne if it's necessary and, they, and the attorney feels that there's liability then we'd probably have to do a quick emergency meeting and gather as many of us for a quorum and get it voted on and, which I'd be willing to do outside of a regular meeting date if we <clears throat> I think now you have school committee people getting involved in, in it rather, like you said. Well, one way or another, we're going to get in, in, into this. I, right. I mean, I'm fortunate or unfortunate. I know. We're in the middle now. Yeah. <laughs> I don't really see what we are. Why are we in the middle? Because if we don't do it, they're going to lose out on a trip. We don't approve. But that's got nothing to do with us, though. <coughs> that's what we all think. Right. That's what we, we all think. That's a definitive answer. Right. answer. So if you're not going to get a motion, I mean, a, a second to the motion, I make a motion we table. Do I have a second on that? Now, in tabling it, what, what are we tabling? That's a big question. I think so Mike would have to restate his motion, I guess, to see what, what to actually table it. When you can get a second, that was to basically be informed of the of the event. Right. So basically, you can't even. We're not even supposed to be discussing the motion. It doesn't get a second. Wow. Second. Uh, Mr. Shea, could you repeat your motion as to what? Vote that the school committee has been informed that students slash staff plan to have a trip to Costa Rica in 2024. concerns with the red staff that's implying that we're <laughs> that's the same that's the sticking point we do nothing oh 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 you take a vote and shoot it down can I modify your motion? Absolutely. <laughs> Bravo. If we take both motions and we kind of put them together and we say table for no more than 10 days to get clarification on the school's obligation, responsibility, school and school committee, you know, questions, then that we would have an emergency meeting to expedite an approval vote. Yeah, it's up to them if they can wait 10 days. And you get vacation week next week, so I'm going to... That's that included, something. yeah. We, we can get whatever answers yeah. there are. I will yeah. make sure that we do our part to get the lawyers involved with whoever needs to be at the table. And, you know, two weeks from today, we can do something or whatever. Whatever whatever you guys want to do. We'll be on Zoom. We'll be on Zoom. Yeah, yeah. we can figure yeah. that out. Yeah. We, can figure that out. Yeah. we can figure that out. We can probably have Maria check in. I don't know if we're still able to have a remote meeting or not, but we can... Talk that through. Yeah, I believe it's still around. It's, it's close there. to coming to an end, but that as an amendment, I would have, I would support that amendment. Yeah, I want more information, so I would support that. Second for the I will second the amendment. Yes. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? You got all yes. that. <laughs> You're opposed to tabling. Tabling. 
Yes, I'm opposed to meeting in 10 days to discuss something that doesn't involve us. Yes. One no vote. Well said. Yes. Yes, okay. So 6 1, Maria. It doesn't hurt I'll volunteer to take that on with you, Mr. Okay. Attorney. Yep. We'll, we'll make a note. Tomorrow morning we will talk to, the, to those mm -hmm. attorneys. We'll set up the call. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sorry. Thank you. We're getting there. We're getting close. The next is vote to approve out of state travel with the visual design students uh, to Rhode Island Design Museum. Uh, could I have a motion, please? We'll move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Um, out of state travel for the ski club. I'm sorry. Motion. Uh, out of state travel for the ski club to New Hampshire. Maria. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make that motion. I'll make that motion. Okay. Uh, any opposed? All in favor? Uh, equipment um, surplus, please. Um, would you like to uh, follow a recommendation? Follow a recommendation. Um, any opposed? Motion carries. Let's see. Uh, report on personnel retirement. Two. Motion to accept the Treasurer's report. Motion to receive placed on file. Okay. Any discussion? Second. Second. Placed on file. Okay. <laughs> Second to what? Second okay. to taking the treasurer's okay. report. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. All right. All in favor? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, any other business that needs to come before us? Um, well, I just one thing, like uh, Mr. Tent, I didn't really recognize Lori Peltzer before, you know, and I just can you send a note tomorrow, at least when it's quick in the night, for her to come here with the kids. Yeah. I thought that, and she's been doing this for a long time. Yes. And I just want to say that, you know, I should have said something. I recognize that her leadership has created this move forward. So I just like to have maybe something from. We can to go to her and say thank you. We will absolutely send that out first thing I tomorrow morning. It. Thank you. Absolutely. Something went wrong. Please try again. Okay. Um, executive session. Um, yeah. Uh, the committee will be adjourning for executive session under Chapter 30, Section 21, discuss, discuss strategy with respect to negotiations with non union personnel. Um, we've determined that. Uh, the open session meeting will not work and that we may be returning to open session. Um, adjournment? Roll call vote. Ms. Bettencourt? Yes. Mr. Shea? Yes. Mr. Romero? Yes. Mr. Romero? Yes. Mr. Durgan? Yes. Mr. Jimmy? Yes. Dr. Marlin? Yes. I'm going to move the committee to the
Okay, uh, returning from the executive session, we need to vote on a few things, folks. Uh, I'd like to make a motion, Madam Chair, that we uh, give the a 2% cost of living increase for all non-union personnel. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay, I'm going to need help with that second one. Uh, so we're asking the committee to vote uh, uh, to approve the new non-union six-step security pay scale. Okay, you heard him. Okay, okay. All right. I make, uh, I make, go ahead. No, I was going to say I make a motion to accept the um, uh, non-union six-step uh, security scale. Security. Um, any opposed? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, the next motion will be to um, give the business manager a new four-year contract commencing uh, July 1st of this year and ending, I believe it's 2000, uh, June 30th, 2007. 27, yep. Yeah. Uh, sorry, 2027, yes. Second. Um, all those in favor? All those in favor? <laughs> Aye. Aye. <laughs> I have any another opposed? Motion. I have another motion that I have to add. I don't know if you want to add this to that. I have a separate motion to extend the superintendent director's contract, uh, which is, I, I forget the exact years of starting, which is see, 20, 20, 20, from June 30th, 2025 to actually from July 1st, 2025 to June 30th of 2029. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. So moved. moved. Thank you. Second. All in favor? All in favor? Aye. 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 A